Trump's uh, purges of China, what he did to the people. Someone who knows what he did and knows what Obama is doing and sees the the analogy. Maybe we can teach the people who are listening something about history because they don't know what what they're living through. So before I get into that, I told you I talk about the Inuit, the Inuits in the Arctic before the white man came and how they lived, or well, the, the Native American for that matter, who lived here for over two hundred thousand years before the Europeans. I'll just. I'll put it in a politically correct way, invaded America. I mean, we can do the pilgrim story. Let's put it in the other context. You're a Native American, uh, which was not all paradis paradisical, by the way. They skinned each other alive, kidnapped each other's wives and daughters, raped them. I mean, let's be clear. Let's stop with the noble savage. But they were here for 200,000 years, and they developed a material culture that was phenomenal. If you ever tried to live off the land and at the same time develop a culture... You'd understand how phenomenal the uh, material culture is of most of the Native American tribes, how advanced they were, and just living off the land, the way they hunted. For example, when they hunted an animal, they didn't butcher the animal for the sake of sport, like so many cowards do. They did so because they needed food and they needed the skin for shelter. In fact, they thanked whatever the spirits were for giving them the animal, rather than just shooting the animal for the blood sport of killing the elephant, for example. But that's not what I want to tell you about. I want to tell you what happened to the Inuit after the white man came, how they went from this sort of remarkable, almost Superman, noble creature who could live on the ice itself, to broken wrecks living on government handouts in cardboard houses with government cheese. What does it have to do with you? Take a look at Obama's invasion. Project ahead 100 years. We see uh, how Guantanamo has been used uh, to create this mythology that uh, America is at war with Islam. And, you know, for us to close it is part of our counterterrorism strategy uh, that is supported by our military, right of our diplomatic, and our intelligence teams. The man is acting out the movie Homeland. He's actually doing it to release dangerous terrorists onto the battlefield and onto the streets. And he's saying it's part of his strategy to to fight the war on terror. Now, what does it have to do with my opening? I'll read you something from the great biography of Mao Zedong. So, the Communist Party envoys condemned one of his competitors, Chi Tan, for being consistently right-wing, meaning too moderate, and charged him with being an agent of Chiang Kai-shek, who had, quote, listen to this carefully, who had created a Red Army base in order to wipe out the Red Army. Do you understand the double speak of that one? Look, maybe this is over the heads of the average listener. I get it. You're bo bo most of you were into, like, damn repub, repub, damn, blah, 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 blah. But I have to go way beyond that in order to make my point. In other words, what Mao Zedong did to even other communists to destroy them and to gain more power and to twist things, such as taking a great friend of his and to destroy him because he wanted more power, he accused him of, quote, being cunning, in order to deceive the party into trusting him. And then he had hideous torture applied to him. I don't want to read what he did. Uh, putting hot wires into their stomachs or thighs, bury them alive. The point was, is he sabotaged the local Red Communist leadership to present himself as the man who saved the country from them. So Obama now is presenting himself as the man who is saving us from terrorism while releasing terrorists to go back onto the battlefield, as happened with the last batch, as happened with his trade for Bergdahl, as will happen from the last monsters who should be executed at uh, Guantanamo. You want to close Guantanamo? Execute all of the prisoners. Execute them by firing squad and close Guantanamo. But don't release them. So on another front of what's going on in front of your eyes on the Malbama in Government Zero, I want to read you a news story. I'll bring it down home, baby. We'll do a 1960s, bring it all down home, baby. Obama's liberal agenda f gets federally funded rides through the arts. <laughs> Came out today, Washington Times. Taxpayers will be forking over $27 million in 2016 for federally funded arts projects, which include a performance by a San Francisco drag queen, art installations with climate change themes, and theater plays that showcase food stamps, Obama's immigration amnesty, lesbianism, and gun rights opposition. 
the so-called National Endowment for the Arts, which is nothing but a slush fund for the left-wing fanatics, gives out taxpayer money for uh, so-called artistic invent endeavors across the nation. And they just announced their latest grants for fiscal 2016. People could not believe these grants. But then they are most, in some cases rather, in Nancy Pelosi's backyard, a woman who supports uh, leather parades where people parade nakedly and beat each other up with whips. And so the grants include $10,000 for the world premiere of Cocked, a play about a pair of lesbians whose anti-gun attitudes are challenged when a relative comes to visit in Chicago. $30,000 to support a mini-series in San Francisco, Pelosi's backyard, entitled Gender in Transition by a Drag Queen. $35,000 for affordable housing and sustainable communities for San Francisco artists. That's an arts grant? $20,000 to support a series of public art presentations on the theme of climate change in Minneapolis. $30,000 to support the continuing development and production of Ping Chung Company's Kaleidoscope, Further Adventures in Pre- and Post-Racial America. And the so-called artists, who are nothing but government propagandists, develop a multidisciplinary work that is inspired, they say, in part by the killings of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown. Are you following the drift of what I'm saying to you? The NEA, it's not about wasteful government spending. It's part of Obama's agenda, which is to pervert all of our culture. Remember I say borders language culture? Now do you understand the culture side of it? This is not just about wasteful government spending. This is about perverting our culture completely. Now the projects you may see as cringeworthy or absurd but to a man like Obama and the idiots and the maniacs and the psychos, the America haters who surround him, this is the good, a good use of taxpayer money. This is what a Nancy Pelosi likes. This is the kind of art that they like. Now, we all criticize the art that appeared during Stalin's time in Russia. We criticize the art that appeared in Germany, Nazi Germany, under Hitler, don't we? We all said it was this. We said it was that. But to see the travesty of this kind of art, lesbians, drag queens, climate change propaganda, while our veterans are neglect neglected and begging for help, and you support this crazy man? This is the same administration that has destroyed science, math, engineering, and medicine in the country. Science, math, and engineering are at an all-time low in the United States of America. Instead, they're giving money to fund drag queens making a mockery of America. Thank you, Paul Ryan, who I affectionately call Obama's beard, since it goes along with this theme of his liberal agenda. Now, so how do I tie this all together? I started by talking about Obama, the madman, Mao Zedong, the madman, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. I showed you in black and white what the liberal agenda is doing to our arts in this country, and I'm trying to tie it together for you, and I'm, then I'm asking you a simple question, which is what do you fear... Obama's going to do before he leaves office, if he leaves office. Since the man is unstoppable, why should, he, why should he leave office? If the man can get away with anything, why should he not just extend his term in office and, and nullify the elections of 2016 uh, based on some national emergency which he creates? He could easily create a national emergency, couldn't he? Lincoln did it. Didn't his hero Abraham Lincoln suspend habeas corpus? Abraham Lincoln was a fascist dictator. I've told you that before. You may glorify him and make him into something he wasn't. Do it, or do it, do it at your own uh, uh, at your own risk. Lincoln was a fascist dictator. I have spent hours researching the di dictatorship of Abraham Lincoln, and I, I try to put it into government zero, but it fell on many de many people's uh, on deaf ears because their minds are made up. They're not flexible. They're not open. And the reason I mention Abraham Lincoln is because he's one of Obama's role models. If 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 Lincoln can suspend habeas corpus. If Lincoln can arrest journalists, what's to stop the maniac from doing it? What's to stop the snake from suspending elections for only 90 days, for example? For example, the maniac can, can uh, orchestrate um, a terrorist attack. They could do that overnight. Can't? Well, they just did one in, uh, Ferg in wherever it was. Uh, sorry. Southern California. I can't remember the town, honestly. It's not, like, high on my list. The shooting attack. There's every reason to believe the government knew these people would go off. Every reason in the world. 
They claim they weren't monitoring that Muslim maniac's social media postings. Bull. Bull. They monitored every last one of them. They knew she was a jihadist. They're just covering it up. They knew who he and her were. Maybe they didn't know exactly the where and when, but they knew they were going to perform an act of terror, and they did so. So what is to prevent a huge event from occurring just before the election so Obama can declare a national emergency and suspend the elections temporarily only for 90 days? This is how he would do it. He would say we're going to have to suspend elections for only uh, 90 days because a part of the power grid went out and we can't count the votes. So for the safety and sake of America and Americans, and your national security is our most important product. Uh, we have Mr. Clapper here to the right. We have my, my national security team, my great national security team around me. There's uh, Mr. Clapper. Uh, here's Jay Johnson. This, this wonderful, superb list of individuals are making certain that an attack like this never happens again. We're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to study it. We're going to have a blue ribbon commission to make sure this never happens again. In the interim, we're going to suspend the, your vote just for 90 days until we can get that grid back up to count those votes. I'm Barack Hussein Obama, and I approve of this message. Have a nice day. Michelle and I are going off to uh, Vail. We'll take a nice ski vacation while the votes are being counted. You say, okay, it's a fantasy. You've had a lot of fun. You know, it's a fantasy, is it? Okay, I'll read you another story. I'll show you the fantasy. See, as a child, I love puzzles. I love big puzzles. The more pieces, the better. I like, first I started with, you know, a few pieces of a puzzle, as a little kid does, an infant. I don't know how old I was. Who knows? I'm not trying to prove anything, but I, I like puzzles. So, in the beginning, you give a kid a puzzle with ten pieces. And you kind of show him how to put it together so with a picture that he understands what the picture is of. Let us say of a, a flower or a, that may be too complicated. A milk bottle a kid could understand, right? So you take the ten pieces and you show your child how when you stick them together, it creates the milk bottle, recreates the milk bottle. And the kid goes, wow, he, gets, he learns to think. That's how you teach creativity and thinking. So then I would work from the ten, all the way up to thousands of pieces. I like big puzzles that sat for weeks. And this is what I do now in radio. I have puzzles all over my studio. I have, I'm working on three books and other projects and film projects and this and that. All of them have their own place, and all the pieces are sitting next to these things. They're like clocks that are waiting to be assembled, or whatever you want to call them. And so, therefore, one of the pieces I've been trying to put together is censorship. Remember in the last few days we've been talking about Mark Zuckerberg and what an all-around evil man he is, in our opinion? how he censored, how he had his little fascist minion censor a post that I put up on the Michael Savage Facebook account which showed Muslims marching with signs in Lund in, uh, in, in front of the, the uh, Norwegian embassy back in 06, saying that they would take over Britain, kill people, bring back the Holocaust. And he took those pictures down, right? Here's one that I dug up, and I, I was working on this puzzle of where does Zuckerberg stand? Why doesn't Zuckerberg close down the social networks of jihadis, I kept asking, why does this, this, this greedy man not be forced, why is he not forced by the government to close down the jihadi networks? So I found this article, Angela Merkel caught on hot mic, griping to Facebook CEO over anti-immigrant posts, cnbc.com 92715. German Chancellor Angela Merkel was overheard confronting Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg over incendiary posts on the social network. Bloomberg reported on Sunday amid complaints from her government about anti-immigrant posts in the midst of Europe's refugee crisis. On the sidelines of a U.N. luncheon on Saturday, Merkel was caught on a hot mic pressing Zuckerberg about social media posts about the wave of Syrian refugees entering Germany, the publication reported. The Facebook CEO was overheard responding, quote, quote, we need to do some work, unquote, on curtailing anti-immigrant posts about the refugee crisis. Are you working on this, Merkel asked in English, to which Zuckerberg replied in the affirmative before the transmission was disrupted. In recent weeks, hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees have washed up on Europe's shores seeking asylum from the raging civil war in their homeland. And it goes on. Earlier this month, Facebook vowed to clean up what it deemed was racist content on the German version of its website. 
At the time, the 